his passion, tenacity, and focus on the future underline his inspirational professional journey. It is one from which all of us should learn. It is an honor for me to introduce to you N. Chandrasekharan, a long distance marathon runner in more ways than one. His perseverance helped create one of India's largest and iconic companies, one which has become a global powerhouse and leader in tech. Chandra leads Tara Sons as its chairman. He is driving into the future with the idea of One Tata by harnessing the strengths of the group that spans 10 business verticals. He is building a digitally connected enterprise driven by AI, data analytics, and cloud computing, and has led the creation of a new business, Tata Digital, to accelerate and leverage the growth of digital businesses in India. And with all this, he also finds time to give of himself to India. Chandra authored Digital Nation, which explores the power of tech in fulfilling the aspirations of India. Chandra, welcome to Microsoft Future Ready. So good to see you. So Chandra, to get started, all economies are looking at really driving the growth forward. So as you look at the global economy, what role can India play in driving the growth from the pandemic? I think the uh, Indian situation is pretty unique. And India's growth is going to be more fundamentally important going forward. Because even if the global growth is going to be good, it's going to be a little bit behind the expected levels of 2021. So given that, I feel India has a larger role to play. And there are many things going for India. I think as the economy fully opens up post the pandemic, I believe that our growth uh, will continue to get stronger. We'll get the full benefit of the consumer spend. And also, the pandemic per se has not really impacted uh, the long-term growth trajectory of India. It has just delayed it because the fundamental factors, whether it is formalization of the economy, the youth, uh, or more people coming into the middle income, all of these are totally intact. And also the policy reforms done before the pandemic and also during and now that are happening are all going to be tailwinds, whether it is the GST, whether it is the bankruptcy code, or the reduction in the corporate, corporate tax rate, strengthening of the balance sheet of the banks, all these were done before the pandemic. And now there is a huge infrastructure pipeline that has been built. And many other things that are happening today will all help towards the uh, growth of India. My own assessment is that uh, this decade India will lead uh, the global growth rates significantly for the, for, the, for the whole decade. Awesome to hear that. And if I just look back at the 20 months of the pandemic so far, I think all of us have also realized that the growth model in India needs a little bit of a recalibration, uh, especially to drive inclusive growth, equitable growth for all of India. And therefore, as you look at it from different parts of the economy, what role can India Inc. play in driving that equitable, sustainable growth? I think it is a very uh, important question. Primarily because in the pandemic, we have really seen certain things getting accelerated. For example, digital adoption, you'll be the first one to say how fast it has uh, got accelerate, accelerated be it in shopping, be it in education, be it in consulting a doctor or whatever it is, people have gotten used to going digital. Yeah. But also, we must realize that it has not been equitable. If you take education, for example, all the urban kids who have access to a device, who have access to the digital infrastructure could do online schooling. But equally, a large number of kids in the rural areas or poor people who don't have access to devices, who didn't have access to the digital infrastructure, big problem. And they are lost out. Years of schooling has been lost. At least a couple of years been, have been lost for these people. So I think it should be a national priority to enable national access to healthcare and education, among other things, 
top priority should be education and health and this should be everybody's job. Uh, government can put the policy infrastructure but the corporate sector has to play its part. I think this is one. The second one also the pandemic kind of gave you a glimpse of how an unpolluted air and environment can be. I live in Pedal Road. Um, normally most days you cannot see uh, the sea from both sides clearly but during the pandemic uh, it was absolutely clear skies were blue and you could even hear the chirping of the birds. So I think uh, there will be an acceleration and towards sustainability there is a lot of pressure. So I think uh, we have to do a lot and I am very glad about the bold commitment the government has made at COP26 about uh, going net zero by 2070. Also the targets for 2030 and so on are very encouraging. So I think we have a lot to do going um, electric vehicles, uh, looking at hydrogen for commercial vehicles, uh, greening our tough sectors like steel, cement, um, renewable power both for for uh, for utility scale and also for consumers. Mm -hmm. So lots to be done I think in both fronts, both in terms of the access nationwide um, on education and healthcare using a digital infrastructure and on the other hand uh, driving this momentum towards a sustainable future. I think big priorities. So I will build on this last bit that you just spoke around as to how uh, the, the future is a little different and uh, especially on sustainability and on equitable growth. So over the last 20 months if you really look at it tech has supported uh, and managed the disruption in almost every sector uh, of the economy. But as we look forward the future is more digital. Uh, and, and therefore, if you drive the digital going forward, how do we scale this digital and tech access and especially your views on cost and scale uh, as we go forward? I think it's funny you should say that because when I published the book uh, Digital Nation in 2019, little did I know that a pandemic will come and it will make the case for digital much more than ever I could ever do. Hmm. So. It's clearly the acceleration of uh, digital is the way forward and it is happening because people from all walks of life have adopted um, going digital. Yeah. So everyone is comfortable today which is a big, big thing because uh, getting that change going uh, is a difficult thing. I believe that we have got a 10 year advantage in terms of change management mm -hmm. due to the pandemic. Uh, but I do not think cost and scale is a big issue because if you take uh, India, we have some fantastic platforms, uh, UPA for example, other for example. So these are platforms of scale and at a fraction of a cost that you can think in anywhere in the world. So India has got the volumes, India has got the mindset to build platforms at scale at a cheaper transaction cost. Hmm. So I do not think that the scale and uh, cost will be the issue. What will be the issue though is how do you make AI machine learning relevant for everyone. This view that AI and machine learning is a software people's job or AI and machine learning is for the elite should go. Hmm. How do you take AI machine learning cloud to work for everybody? to work for field workers, truck drivers, uh, all kinds of professionals uh, in the urban areas, rural areas. I have said it in the book and I will repeat it again. India does not have the time or resources to keep building huge physical infrastructure. If we have to achieve it now in near term, the only way is to use digital connection to expand the capacity and the reach of the limited physical resources we have. Physical resources in terms of infrastructure and things as well as resources in terms of um, knowledge and capability. So we have got to get this to work for a large number of people across the nation and I think time is now and, and it is happening but we all need to come behind it and accelerate it. 
No, so mm. you've always been a passionate advocate, and I, I really I picked up the book uh, after the pandemic uh, began once again and reread it. Uh, at that point to truly see a lot of the thought process there and that needs to be accelerated. You said that tech has accelerated by more than 10 years during yeah. this time. Yeah. Now tech is clearly one of the trends post the pandemic. Are there other trend lines after the pandemic that we should broadly think about? See the tech will be a very important trend uh, that is going to make a profound impact uh, globally but definitely in India because uh, the other theme that we talk about is uh, in India it is not about addressing the market. Hmm. It is about creating the market. A large section of the people are not participating in the market because of lack of access. Hmm. What tech will do is to enable that access. Hmm. So it will bring in more people and in the process expand the market significantly. So tech's impact is going to be huge and if deployed properly it can empower people it can definitely ensure that people are able to perform um, in an AI machine learning assisted way to enhance their capabilities. And it will also ensure that people's income levels go up, more people will come in the formal economy. The benefit is kind of a, a knock on effect, all positive. So that is clearly one trend. The second trend according to me is sustainability. I think it is the biggest challenge for humankind mm. for the next decades to come. And we definitely need to address this. And the COP26 uh, was positive, but still we are not at the 1.5 degree target. So we have lots more to do. There has to be a lot of innovation that needs to happen. While we have certain technologies picking up momentum, for example, um, renewable energy is picking up, solar is picking up big way in India, but still we need to figure out a way to supply solar 24 by 7. So what does it mean in terms of storage? Uh, we, need, we need more innovation there. And what does it mean in terms of cost? Same thing, hydrogen. If you want to go hydrogen in a big way, what is the cost structure? hydrogen cost has to come down to a dollar per kilogram mm. and that will require innovation and there may be other technologies there are um, technologies coming in nuclear um, which are which are going to be very interesting so i think what we need to do to make the sustainability happen is one is a firm commitment which the government is leading and i'm sure all corporates will do it's a good business mm. it's not it's not only a low carbon business it's also a new new economic yeah. model so it will accelerate, but we need to be supporting uh, a lot of innovation, a lot of entrepreneurship, a lot of startups, like the way the startups uh, happening in AI, ML and, and, and other areas, we need a lot of innovation that needs to come in. The third is the global supply chain. The global supply chain uh, definitely has to be uh, reconstructed. Um, and. India has an important role to play because of the skills and, and the opportunities that we have and the scale that we have. So uh, it will uh, be a big economic opportunity. So there are other trends, li trends like the health and safety and all that. But I think the top three for me would be digital, sustainability and the uh, reconstruction of the global supply chain for resilience, um, not only for efficiency. That's really, really <coughs> awesome to hear. So uh, I'm going to shift tracks a little bit. Your, per, your personal professional journey is an inspiration to me and to millions uh, in India and globally. So I'm going to pick on one aspect of your per, uh, personal journey uh, and this is everybody knows about your passion for marathons uh, and, and you are a marathon runner. I'd really like to understand how you bring that, that passion and learning from marathon running into the world of business and what do you get there? I think marathon running has been uh, probably one of the best things that happened to me ever. And I didn't start early, I started only when I was uh, in early 40s. Um, and it has uh, not been a mere sport for me, it has built character. Hmm. And I have learned so many things from running marathons. It has taught me the importance of perseverance, um, importance of endurance. 
and importance of preparation uh, and importance to take things in your stride. You can prepare for six months for running a good race. On the race day, things yeah. may go bad. Weather may be bad. <laughs> it may be rain. It may be too hot. Um, things can happen. So how do you work in your context is something that I've learned from running marathons because you have to run your race. Yes. You cannot get distracted by someone else uh, as a uh, race. So how do you develop your strategy? We all compete, but yeah. your strategy and execution based on your context, not on someone else's context. So I think there's a lot of learning. And, and also other important thing about marathon is people think it's an individual sport, it is not. Actually, when, a, when you run a marathon, you get the, the lift from all the people who run uh, in the race. Uh, that's how you do the race better. You complete without uh, hitting the wall. Uh, any marathon runner will tell you that after 30 kilometers and 32, you hit the wall. And hmm. unless or otherwise that momentum of all the other people um, takes you, you don't complete the race. Because you never train for 42. You only train for 30, 32, 34 kilometers. So the last 10 kilometers you run because everybody runs. So it's a, it's a, it's been a great experience for me. And you know, I, I learn from marathon every day. It, it relates not only in business, it relates in all walks of life. And I'm just going to pick on that last bit a little, uh, a little more. And, and you've been a solution finder and a growth mindset uh, champion all along. How do you now bring all of this into the broader Tata Sons community and the Tata Group community in, in driving this growth mindset, a solution finding mindset? See, I think the uh, um, opportunity is there because it is one of the greatest groups. Yeah. Uh, and it's got great people. Uh, it has got a history. Uh, it has got a um, value system um, that has been there around for more than 150 years. And uh, the culture, um, one of solving problems, uh, not only for business and also for society, is deeply embedded in the group. And from my point of view, uh, the group has enormous potential in every business that it operates in. And I'm the one who believes that growth is the source of one's energy. So I kind of go for growth, but obviously you can grow only if you're fit. <laughs> so how do you bring the learning from marathon um, into business? To drive growth is to first become fit. <laughs> Wherever you're not fit, don't try to grow. <laughs> so, so it's kind of a, it's kind of a very interesting paradigm. Um, but I think India is an exciting place. This group is an exciting place. Um, we are, uh, while we are strengthening the core, we are also transforming our companies towards the new future in terms of sustainability, digital, yes. and all of it. And then we are also creating multiple businesses, which are future businesses. So it's kind of a three. Uh, planks that we are working on. Uh, it's pretty exciting. No, it's amazing how you talk about fitness in business. And, and with that, I have to say, I always enjoy listening to you. I'm continuously being learning from you. I hope our audience got a chance today uh, to get some of that. Chandra, I know you're very, very busy. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us at Microsoft Future Ready. Thank you, Anant. Thank you to you. Thank you to Satya. Thank you to Microsoft for having me on the platform.